Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. I had a viewer named Jenny that's newer to crafting, and she was questioning how to use her paper trimmer most effectively. So one of the things she wanted to know was how to cut smaller pieces of paper, and I just thought I'd walk you through trimmers in general. The most common forms of trimmers are the Fiskars trimmers. This is a Cricut trimmer. It's actually less expensive than the Fiskars and I recommend it more highly for me than this one and I'll tell you why. I bought this smaller trimmer thinking well I'm only going to be making cards. I won't have any problem using that but then you don't think about how you'd go to a store and you'd buy this piece of paper and then how do you make it work on the small trimmer. So my first advice is, if you are going to be doing cards, still buy a 12 inch or larger paper trimmer. It will save you a lot of hassle in the end because otherwise you're going to have to find out how to fold this paper and make it work and believe me, it's not worth the effort. The reason I'm saying that is this Cricut trimmer at Joann's will sell for under, well right now I think full price is $15, so if you have a coupon you should spend less than $10 for it. With that in mind, it makes it a much better product for your needs because it has this great arm. You're going to want to always use the arm when you're trimming larger pieces of paper. The other thing I would recommend, and this is key when you're trimming paper, <clears throat> I would recommend that you make marks on certain lines that you will use often. The trim lines that you use more often than any others are five and a half, four and a quarter. I make five inch cards and seven inch cards and you'll, um, if you make a five inch and a seven inch, you'll need the ten inch mark. Um, on your paper trimmer marked as well. Okay, so let's talk first about a 5 by 7 card. When you make a 5 by 7 card, this is what it looks like. I'm sorry I did this in white. I didn't think about the fact that my paper trimmer is white. But when you make a 5 by 7 card, that means that open it's 10 inches long. So when you trim your 12 inch, we'll use these paper as our example, I'm going to show you a paper that will explain one of the things that's most confusing for a newer paper trimmer. When you use a piece of paper like this, that the pattern is really important because the pattern is in this direction, you're going to want to make your card in this direction. You follow that? Because you're going to want to get as much of the vase in there as possible. So when, when you're first cutting paper, you might get a little confused by that. So what you're going to want to do, what I would do, is I would figure out where on this paper do I want my paper to be cut. And if I want it to be cut so that it goes all the way across, then you can, you can lay your card on it like this and uh, trim around it. So let's say that's what you decided. You want to go, you want to cut that much of your design out. What I would do if I was a new paper cutter is I would first take just junk paper and by junk paper I mean um, it, this could be um, a piece of typing paper. I would take your p typing paper and I'll use that I'm using some not so pretty cardstock as my example. The first thing you have to remember on uh, cardstock that you get out of a paper pad is it always is going to have this little piece of paper on it. If you want to make sure that you've got an accurate cut, put your paper in at the 12 inch mark because that will tell you exactly how much of this needs to be cut off in order to have a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. Now my paper is 12 inches by 12 inches. Before that little piece of paper might have confused you. So get rid of it so that you don't have to worry. If you're going to be making a, a 5 by 7 card, then your paper needs to be 10 inches long because 
a five by seven piece of or a five by seven card has to be ten inches long so it can fold at five inches. I hope you follow that. Then you want to turn it one turn and put it in at seven inches because your other cut is a seven inch cut. Now you have a five by seven card. The only thing you have left to do is really to fold it. Now I can just fold this because it's just a uh, really inexpensive paper and I'm going to do that just for speed sake. So now you have a template and I made this so that it was colored so you could see it. You have a template you can always use to determine do I want my paper this way, do I want my paper this way if I have a five by seven card. So what you're going to do in the case of the vase, that's a rhyme in the case of the vase, what you'd want to do in the case of the vase is you're going to decide do I want it to go this way, do I want it to go this way, do I want it to be in the center of the of the flower pot. Let's say I decide I want it to be in the center of the flower pot and I'm only going to have it be exactly where um, where I have my template. I only want it to cover the front of the card. What you're going to do is you're just going to hold your paper in place, that template that we just made. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the top edge. I'm going to make it so that my template, my card, this card, is right up or right up to the cut line. And the cut line is going to be where this, uh, let me make a mark there so you can see that. On your trim blade, you're going to have a little mark. See this little mark right here? I'm making it blacker so you can see it. So you're going to push that paper right up to that spot and then you're going to make sure that you hold down the underneath paper pull your template out. We can now trim that off. We now know where the top of our card is. So then we're going to put our template back in place. And again, remember that's the top of our card. So now we can do the same thing with this side. We're going to slide it so that our the bottom of our paper is on our cut line. You're going to put that down again and you can make sure that your little bar is close to where your where your template is. Again, hold the paper below, pull the template out, cut that out. Then you've made two cuts. Now we know the the side and the bottom. We can turn our paper around and slide our card up to where the cut line is. We know we've got two sides cut and two sides to go. So right there is the line where I'm cutting. So all I have to do is make sure that I pull this paper up right to it, take my template out, and we can cut that. Now we have three sides of our card cut. The very last is the bottom. And then you're going to take that, again slide it up to the cut line, pull your template out, make sure at all times that this part stays flush with this. You want it to be flush with this line, you know, this bar that you have on your paper trimmer and you pull that out. Now you've created the front to your 5 by 7 card. That's all you have to do to do that. If you want this to be on the front of a card and you want it to be small enough that you'll have a border, you only need a quarter inch border. So you're going to take a quarter inch, in this case I'm taking a quarter inch off the bottom because it's the place where there isn't any kind of design that I really love. And then you turn it. So you decide do I like this side better or this side better. In my case I think I'm going to take my quarter inch off this side. See that's the quarter inch line right there. And you're going to take that off. Now, when you put it on your card base, see how you've got a border all the way around? So that's how you create a base for your card that will make it look really nice. Where's my 8 by 10 card that I already made? Here it is. You'll be able to see a lot better on this. You see the... I might get the white out of the way. Do you see the white background all the way around it? That's how you create that, is you just take a quarter inch off of your piece on one side and the bottom. Okay? So, 
one of the questions that Jenny had was, how do I cut if I want a two and a half by one and a half inch piece of paper? Okay, well, I think the problem you might be having, Jenny, and I'm not sure if this is the case, but you might be starting with a piece that's very, very narrow, and you're trying to cut from there. Let's use this piece as our practice because it's not anything spectacular. So what I would do is using this side of your cut bar, if you have measurements on this side that go past one and a half inches, that's great. But if you only go to one and a half inches, mine goes to two inches, but I have a one and a half inch mark, which is right there. I'm going to mark that so you can see it. There is my one and a half inch mark. Let's say that you want to have a one and a half by two and a half inch card, which is what she wanted. I would slide my paper in from the right side. I would slide it to the one and a half inch mark, right there where I have that arrow. Do you see that? I would make my trim. I would leave that and just keep sliding this down to the one and a half inch. Trim it again. One and a half inch. Trim it again. I'm going to do a few of these just so that we have we can make them at the end that we have the ability to make our two and a half inches so that you have more than one. One and a half inch. Now, if you were trying, Jenny, to make it with this size piece, these get all wonky in here. If you don't get it to the thicker part, and it's, it's white, so it's really hard to see, but if you don't get to the thicker part here, it's really hard to use the paper, so you might not want to use your last strip. So now your goal is to make this a two and a half inch because you've already cut these to one and a half inch. So each one of these pieces is one and a half inches this way. So in order to make it a two and a half inch, you're going to slide it this way to the two and a half inch mark, which is right here. Do you follow that? Two and a half. Now you have a one and a half inch by two and a half inch piece. You're going to slide this to two and a half inches again. And there is a one and a half by two and a half. Take your next strip, or in this case, I could take a couple strips because they're so little or so thin. If you have thinner paper, you can do more than one because this is really, really thin paper. Put it in at two and a half, cut it off, move it to two and a half, and cut it off. Okay, let's say that your trimmer doesn't have anything over here. You don't have, you just have, a, a, let's say you have a rotary trimmer that has no, uh, no way to look at it from the left side. If that's the case, then what you're going to want to do <clears throat> is you're going to want to put your paper in on this side to one and a half inches. Trim it off. You've got a, now you've got a one and a half inch piece to the right side. And then you're going to turn it like this. Put it into two and a half inches. Cut it. Move your paper to two and a half inches. Cut it. Move your hat two and a half again, and cut it, oops, paper's not right, so you're going to make an assembly line of one and a half inch by two and a half inch strips, just like that. Our last piece is too little to do anything really with, you could use that to just stamp on and put on a card, but that really isn't going to be able to make anything more. So here are your one and a half by two and a half inch pieces done two different ways some from the left side and some from the right side. So I hope that was what you wanted to know. Now maybe the next thing you want to know is, let's say I want to make a, I want to cut a box out of my card. If that's the case, what I would do, well first let me show you how to cut a standard A2 size card. If you want to cut a standard A2 size card, let's say this is, you wanted to make sure that you had some cards that were already made up. In order to do that, I make my cards this way. I put them in and I put them at, um, because, our, because our paper is 11 inches from across this way, you're going to put it in 
at half of 11 inches, which is five and a half. That's why I made that five and a half inch mark. And then you're going to want to trim it. Now you have an A2 size card. All you have to do now is fold it. And if you don't have a scoreboard, you can use this cut bar. And what you need to, to get is a tool. You can use your, you can use, um, one of these. This is from Martha Stewart. It's a bunch of things in one. It's got a cutting knife in it, but in it also is this little ball. You can use that and you put you line your paper up at four and a quarter because now we have an eight and a half inch long piece of paper. So you want to take your little ball and you want to put it in your cut bar and you just want to follow that cut bar the whole way and that makes your paper so that it is now a folded piece of four and a half, excuse me, four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock, which is a standard A2 size card. This is what most card makers make when they make a card. Then, you want to do it again, you would just put it in again. Again, remembering you're always wanting to make sure you figure out how long this is. It's eight and a half inches, so you'd want to put it at the four and a quarter. You want to get some a tool that has a little ball on it like this one and you just run it down that score line like that this is so you don't have to buy the that tool the scoreboard I still think a scoreboard is a great tool and I, I recommend you buying one but if you don't want to this uh, Martha Stewart tool that's an all-in-one works really good for that another thing that you can buy are these um, McGill flower making kits because see the tools inside have the little balls on them that's what you that those are what you'd use your ball has to be bigger than your groove if it's not bigger than your groove you're going to cut your paper in half so if you're thinking well I could just use like a, a butter knife no you can't you'll cut your paper you have to, your ball has to be bigger than that slit okay so let's see the last thing I wanted to do is show you I've already showed you how to make um, this uh, this size card now this is a size card that Jennifer McGuire usually uses I use side fold cards or top fold in this in, in this um, format a lot of people including Jennifer McGuire will cut her card stock in half the long way which means this is only eight and a half inches across so that's why you would put it in the four and a quarter and you trim it this way and then when you tr when you put it in to score it you're going to score it at five and a half inches because now this is an 11 inch piece of you're always measuring this length now this is 11 inches I can put it on my board for you and you can see it's 11 inches but now that you see it's 11 inches you always care about what half of that is and half of it is five and a half inches so you would take your little your little scoring tool and you'd put it in and on your little line now you've got what's called a top fold card this is a side fold card and it's made a little bit different you can use this as a side fold as well but if you can see the difference in the it, they're exactly the same size but this one is um, kind of more narrow top to bottom when you're using it than this one is because this one has you're using the side on this one follow so um, th that's the different way you can cut your card stock to make it work for you. Now, the last thing I want to show you is, let's say you want to cut a box out of your card. And in this case, I'm going to make my box so that it starts at an inch from this pink edge and it ends an inch from this pink edge. So what, I, what you do, I draw my boxes on there in pencil just so I know what I'm doing and you don't want to have your card folded because remember you're only going to be um, you're going to be doing this I'm going to start at the top you're going to be doing this so that it's um, only cutting through the front this is for let's say you're going to make a, a shaker card and you want to have a box on your shaker card so what I did is 
I made a mark at one inches and I made a mark at three and a quarter inches. Now if you look at your paper trimmer, hold on, I'll move that out of the way. If you look at your paper trimmer, on right here, I don't you probably can't see it, but look at your own. You should have marks, like a three and a quarter inch mark is right here and the one inch mark is right there. If you have it so that you know where you're cutting from, you're going to take your cutting tool and you're going to start at the one inch mark. Okay, let me show you this too. Okay, hopefully you can see this. On the tool, on your cutting tool, you should have little marks. Here's the mark that tells you where the front is. I already talked about that. But on this side and this side, there's also a mark. That shows you the starting point of where you're cutting from. So if you are starting at the one inch mark, and I'm going to have to move my head, now my little bar is at the one inch mark. So you're going to take that, I'm going to start at the top so you can see it better. I already know that I want to start, sorry I didn't tell you this part. I know that when I um, start from the top of my card down, I want to be at, um, I want to start my measurement at one and a half inches is where I'm starting it. And I wrote that somewhere, yeah, right there. See where I wrote it, one and a half inches? That's going to be the bar line that goes across the top. So I put my paper in at one and a half inches, and then I'm going to move my little cut bar up to three and a quarter inches like that and then I'm going to pull it toward me until I get to that one inch mark. Then I want to pick it up. See how I saw that paper had like a something stuck in it. Then on this side I want this to be on the one inch. I want it to be a one inch so you line it up on your measurement down here one inches. But remember again you have to make sure that you're starting at the cut lines here. So we're going to hold it and pull it down until we get to our mark, which is one and a half inch. And we're going to turn it again. Oops. And we're going down to the one inch mark where we started from. Going up two, three and a quarter again, and then we're going to put our paper back in, and this time we should be at three and a quarter here, and hopefully one last time. Okay, all, all I missed are my little edges here. My little corner. I didn't get my little corners cut out. That's That happens because your blade, it's so hard to see with your blade, like wh where exactly you are. So now we've cut our box out. If you if you decide how how big you want your box and draw it on, that really does make it easy for you. If you decide, like, the easiest way to do it is decide that you wanted, the easiest measurements really are these ones. If you say you want it at one inch and three and a quarter inches, then what you do is you're going to put your paper to the one inch mark. Do you see how my one inch mark will now cut? exactly that line. Then if I move this to three and a quarter, you see how that line is cut? The hard part is cutting these two lines. That's the tricky part. So I hope that helped you with some ideas on paper trimming and Jenny, I hope that answered your questions about it. Again, I recommend the bigger paper trimmer and um, now that I have this Cricut trimmer, I do like it better than any of my other paper trimmers. I recommend it very highly and I hope that that gave you some good ideas. I hope you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe and tell your friends about me on social media because I really appreciate that and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.